In this video, we will learn about acute portal vein thrombosis. We will find out why this condition is so dangerous. What's the difference between acute and chronic portal vein thrombosis? What is complete and incomplete occlusion of portal vein? What are the causes of portal vein thrombosis? How do we diagnose this condition? And how do we treat this condition? To understand it better, let's look at this cartoon over here. This is the stomach. Food enters through the gullet into the stomach where it's churned up and is passed into the small bowel. So this is all small bowel. The pancreas is at the back of the stomach and it produces enzymes, chemicals that digest the food and that meet with the food at this point. The liver produces bile which comes down the bile tube and it enters the small bowel over here. And as food goes through the small bowel, the goodness is absorbed from the food. The digested food is then passed into the colon where it's digested some more and the excrement comes out. Now let's see how the portal system functions. The portal system is a network of veins that takes the blood from the bowel, the small bowel and the large bowel, and then channels it from smaller and smaller veins into bigger veins, which ultimately form the portal vein in this segment that takes the blood up into the liver for the liver to extract all the goodness out of the food that we eat. And then once liver has filtered the blood, the blood is then passed back into hepatic veins or liver veins, which transport the blood towards the heart and the main circulation. So let's look at the two different circulations. One is the portal circulation that, as I said, takes the blood from the gastrointestinal tract towards the liver. The systemic circulation includes the heart pumping the blood throughout the body. And then this blood comes back into the veins as illustrated in blue over here to form one big vein called the vena cava. And the liver drawn out over here drops all of the blood from the portal circulation back into the systemic circulation just near the heart. These two systems do communicate with each other through channels that remain dormant until such time as the pressure within the portal system reaches a certain threshold. And then over time, this opens up the communication. However, the communication channels are tiny veins which are not designed to take up the excess blood flow and they become very dilated, especially around the esophagus and in the abdominal wall. And these are then called varices. So if there is a slow process of obstruction to flow of portal circulation, that is a chronic portal vein thrombus, then there is time for this pressure to dissipate through the communication channels around the esophagus in the abdominal wall and other places in the abdomen. The acute portal vein thrombosis is completely different because there is no time for these channels to open up and dissipate the pressure. Now let's see how does the portal vein thrombus arise and what consequence does it have? Normally the portal circulation flows towards the liver as demonstrated over here. However, a clot may form within the portal vein. This is what is called throm thrombus and the process is called thrombosis. And this blood initially may not cause a complete occlusion of the portal vein, allowing blood to pass into the liver. In that situation, the patient may not demonstrate much by way of symptoms. However, as the clot progresses and causes a complete occlusion of the circulation, this will have significant problems with the blood not flowing out towards the liver and the pressure building up towards the bowel, mainly the small bowel causing the small bowel to get very engorged and distended as well as the fluid leaking out into the abdomen. Typically patients in the beginning may not have any symptoms but they may develop abdominal pain which can be colicky to begin with but may become more sustained. If this situation doesn't settle and progresses the bowel may lose its blood supply altogether due to the extensive engorgement and may actually die resulting in perforation of the bowel and the contents leaking inside the abdomen leading to peritonitis with the patient becoming increasingly sicker and unwell. The pain becomes much more extensive and at this point the patients are unable to move. They may have other systemic signs such as a high pulse rate, temperature, a low blood pressure and shallow breathing. Why should a clot arise as shown over here in the portal vein? There's a long list of causes. The common ones are outlined over here. Conditions of the blood such as thrombophilias which are inherited, cirrhosis of the liver which is a condition where there is more scar tissue in the liver, acute infections in the abdomen may result in portal pyemia where 
the bacteria now infect the blood within the portal vein, liver cancer itself, medication such as oral contraception increase the risk of clots forming in the portal vein, as well as systemic veins, pregnancy, acute pancreatitis, inflammation of this organ at the back over here may cause inflammation within the portal vein and a clot forming, inflammatory bowel disease, autoimmune disorders such as lupus and Basset syndrome, surgery or trauma to the abdomen, and around the time of birth, if there is infection or inflammation of the umbilical stump, that may cause portal vein thrombosis in the newborn. So how do we diagnose this condition? The symptoms are usually non-specific and we may not fully appreciate how sick the patients are initially. Patients will require hospital admission and the blood tests may show a rise in inflammatory markers. And if the bowel is beginning to be compromised or is compromised, the blood test will show acidosis on blood gas analysis as well as the rise of lactate levels indicating potential damage to the bowel. However, the most important diagnostic tool is a scan, commonly the CT scan. When deployed with contrast will indicate the extent of the clot in the portal venous system, its effects on the bowel and whether or not the bowel is compromised and may also indicate the cause. MRI scan may do the same but it takes longer to perform and a Doppler ultrasound is more specific for picking out a clot in the vein but may not show other detail within the abdomen. The treatment of acute portal vein thrombosis really is in three parts. We have to provide treatment to the portal vein thrombus. We have to treat the complication that may have arisen due to it. And then we have to treat the underlying cause. In terms of the thrombus, if there is no contraindication, patients would need blood thinners to reduce the risk of the portal vein thrombus propagating and also to help reopen the channel where possible. Heparin is the oldest and the most useful and easily reversible that is deployed. Its longer acting low molecular weight der derivatives may also be deployed and this tends to be the initial treatment as soon as this diagnosis is made. This is then followed up after patient stabilization with oral anticoagulants such as heparin or the newer ones such as apixaban, rivaroxaban etc. The majority of the patients would settle with this regime and the clot may not progress. Rarely patients may not be able or suitable for anticoagulation. And there is some evidence that direct clot removal may be beneficial in specific patients. This can be done by attempts at dissolving the clot with x-ray guidance where from the side of the patients, catheters are inserted directly into the portal vein and products are given to break clots are removed under imaging or scan guidance and thus re-establishing the flow of the portal vein as before. Far less commonly, surgery may be deployed to directly remove the clot. As outlined already, this condition is associated with compromise of the bowel, which loses its blood supply and may infarct, thus leading to perforation. The treating team must, must be very vigilant about this complication and must perform emergency surgery to remove the dead bowel if a life is to be saved. Finally, and most importantly, the underlying cause for portal vein thrombosis must be found and treated. The anticoagulation should continue at least for six months if the underlying cause is treatable. If it is not treatable or a cause is not found, then sometimes it's important to continue the blood thinners in the long term, recognizing the risks and complications of this treatment. This completes a brief overview. If you have any comments, please do share.